Hi guys, we're going to do a quick Osfront playtest here, more of an example. Uh, you'll notice I'm playing on a quite sloped terrain. Uh, it helps you get um, hold down positions for your tanks or infantry. Uh, we've got Wehrmacht versus US Army here. These will be veterans, uh, assault infantry. Uh, these are standard infantry. We've got a couple of Shermans, a US Howitzer. We've got a Panther. A, uh, Mag half track, an SDK triple two light vehicle, and of course a Kubel wagon. So I'll roll off to see who gets the first turn here. We'll see the Wehrmacht are the white dice. So it looks like the US will be going first. Okay, so US options, what are they going to do? We can try and move up and flank that Panther, so let's do that. Uh, your average Sherman moves four and a half inches, so he's going to go flat out which means moving twice, uh, so he'll be moving 9 inches. And if he wants to pivot, it'll cost him half an inch. So, say he wants to pivot going that way, he'll pivot and go 8.5 inches to there. This guy here, oh, he's got a pretty good line of sight at the front of that panther. Uh, we'll check to see which facing he's actually facing. Uh, make a line between the vehicle's uh, corners, and draw a line towards the vehicle. So it looks like he's actually facing the side of that panther which is good for him, because it makes it much easier to attack. Uh, so we'll do all our movement first, and then we'll get into the shooting phase. These infantry in the center, might as well move them up. Uh, the other option would be to stay still, go to ground, which could be smart, but uh, let's do an attack. Say we want to move up quickly. And this tank here, the Sherman, he's going to... Let's, uh, let's move up and advance the infantry. Uh, support the infantry. So we'll pivot and go four inches just to support them. That way you'll still be able to shoot. Cool, so shooting phase. Got to do, or well, the attack phase, I believe it's called. We've got to do a howitzer first because he's a indirect weapon and requires guessing. So always do them first. Uh, I'm going to, I'll try to target the infantry, I think. Although I could go for the panther. Oh, let's go for the infantry. We'll put a uh, marker right there, and then we'll check range. Uh, if he's in the 40 inches, it'll just be 1d6 scatter, so yep, that's fine. So he scatters 1d6 inches, goes that way 1 inch. Uh, we try to roll as close to possible as to the point of impact. And looks like it hits that one unit of infantry, and it's pretty close to hitting that other unit. I would say it does hit that other unit, uh, because they kind of stun the game. Uh, gone to ground, there'll be minus one damage, but the howitzer inflicts plus one damage, so it'll be standard damage. So I'll roll for these guys. One to three is nothing. These guys, one to three is nothing. Uh, four to six is 50 percent casualties, and seven is wiped out. So they survive their howitzer bombardment. Next up, we'll do this guy's move flat out, so he can't shoot. This guy's going to fire at the side of that panther. So we'll check range. Uh, within 24 is his standard range for a 75mm, so it's a normal range to the side of the panther. He hasn't moved, so no modifiers there. So it'll be 4 plus to hit, uh, but light armor makes it 3 plus. Uh, there is a bit of cover in between them. It's bordering on 50%, so I'd say I'd probably roll for it as to whether it's 50% or not. We'll say on a 4 plus, it's 50% cover. Nope, you can see pretty clearly past there. So now that we've established whether it's he's got cover or not, we will uh, we'll do the shot. So four plus is his usual hit score. Three plus four light. He hits. Uh, his type is is nothing. Got no type dash type, but plus one for light. So he'll add plus one to his roll when he rolls damage. Two. So the tracks have been damaged on the panther. We usually use a silver marker or a white marker for tracks damaged, and that's his shooting complete. Uh, he also could have declared machine guns against his infantry, but I think he'll be out of range. Uh, but you do have to declare all your targets for each vehicle, declare all your targets at once, and then resolve your shooting. So if we're being strict, I wouldn't be able to fire my machine guns, but I'll check range anyway. Pretty sure they're out, 16 inches. Yep, they're out. So, infantry have moved six inches, which means they can't shoot, but they're moving up to advance. Uh, this. Sherman is going to fire everything he's got at those infantry. Uh, he's moved only four and a half inches. 
Now there's something in between them, obviously the corner of this building, so any, uh, any intersecting cover, they will get cover. Uh, so he's within machine gun range. Nope, he's just out of machine gun range, 16 inches. But his main gun will be out of fire, and it's not affected by moving at all. Uh, not against infantry. So he fires his main gun. It's got high explosive, and he's within 24 inches. So the high explosive is uh, effective. If it was at long range, it wouldn't get any bonus. So he fires. Usually it'd be plus one, but because these guys uh, have just started the game, the count has gone to ground, so it'll just be standard damage. It's a four, so that's 50% casualties. So put a little red marker on them. They're taking 50%. And they've got a morale check. Because they are assault infantry, they only fail on a one. They're okay. So they're not pinned next turn. And that is the US turn. US first turn. So, Wehrmacht first turn. What are they going to do? I think we will move this guy up the side here. He's the SDK Triple Two, which I believe moves seven inches. Yep, seven inches. So yeah, he can try to uh, get in up here. Maybe try and sneak a shot on the side of that Sherman if he's lucky. Uh, this Panther, obviously his sides are quite vulnerable here, so I think his best shot is probably to reverse and get out of there. Uh, yeah, his gun's powerful enough that if he if he moves, he'll probably still be able to uh, destroy one of those Shermans. But we'll see. Um, yep, let's go for it. So he's going to move back. Uh, his usual move is five inches. And he wants to pivot as well, so he's going to go back four and a half and pivot to face those Shermans. Problem is he leaves himself open on that side, but hopefully the uh, the bulge of the land there will protect him. Uh, cool, other movement. These guys here, they will stay on to ground. So they'll give them a little marker, just so I remember. They'll stay where they are, so they can uh, take a bit of cover, wait for these other infantry to, to move up. Uh, there's no, I haven't rolled any objectives or anything in this game, but let's just say there's a central objective that these guys need to get to. Uh, let's give them a random Soviet documents or something, let's say everyone within six inches of that can, uh, most units within six inches will win the, win the game, just for a random objective. Uh, cool, so I think this little Kubel wagon will move up seven, try and get some machine gun shots on those infantry down there if you can. Uh, these guys are within three inches of the building, so they'll enter the building. So they now count as in this room, so you can place it anywhere inside that room. Uh, and now their line of sight will be 45 degrees either side of uh, the window frontage. So pretty much all the way around there for that room. They can also uh, shoot it. If there were enemy units in either of these rooms, they'd be able to shoot them as they move in. Uh, obviously that they'd get, they'd get cover. Uh, but because they've just moved in, they can't shoot outside the building. They spend the turn clearing their room, making sure it's uh, safe to fire from. These guys here, um, let's put them into the half track and they'll go for a little mission. So they're within six inches. Both units have to stay still to do the embarking. So let's just, yeah, embark them in there. And that's them, they've got an inch there, their half track, and they're ready to go. So shooting phase, uh, he'll try and fire some heavy machine guns. See if he's within 16 inches. Yes, he is. So roll one dice for machine guns, or any, any weapon firing infantry. Just roll one dice for each group. So heavy machine gun. Uh, standard damage, no cover or anything, so let's roll it. It's a six, so that's 50% casualties. So they take some casualties. Now they roll their pinning check. They are pinned. Get down, we're on fire. So we'll give them a yellow marker as well, so they're pinned. They can't move or shoot next turn. Okay, other shooting. These guys haven't moved, so they can try to fire at them as well. We'll fire, uh, we'll declare, because you have to declare all your weapons at once with each, each individual unit. So we'll declare our uh, HMGs and uh, rifles against them. I doubt the rifle range, but we'll give it a shot. And we'll declare our anti-tank rifle against that Sherman. So here are machine guns. We are just out of range there. Rifles, 12 inches, obviously out of range. And the AT rifle against the Sherman, also out of range. Cool, other shooting. This SDK triple two, who has moved up the side there. He can see that Sherman, Sherman will have cover. Uh, but I think he'll also be to the side. Yep, he's to the side there. So he's going to give it a shot, try and open up with his uh, auto cannon there. Uh, if he's within, I think, 
four inches or is it eight inches? I don't think he's close range either way. Yep, he's not, not close range. Uh, his normal range with an auto cannon is 24 inches. That's his, ma uh, his max range. So his standard range is 16. So he's in normal range. Uh, he's moved though, so that'll uh, decrease his accuracy. Usually with a auto cannon, you hit on a five plus. Uh, he's moved, becomes six. Cover becomes seven, but because he's light, it goes back down to six. So he needs to roll six, pretty much. He doesn't pull it off. In between moving and the cover, he's not able to get a shot in. And finally, the panther. What can he see? He use true line of sight. So have to get down there and uh, make sure you can actually see things. He's moved in a pretty good hull down position. Almost too good. Uh, and he doesn't actually have much in the way of targets. So... I think he'll fire at. In fact, he's pretty much blocked. We'll, we'll give it a shot at this, uh, this Sherman down there. So with tank turrets, you nominate your target. Uh, he won't have a problem because he's not a heavy turret or anything, but usually with a heavy turret you can only uh, rotate 60 degrees per turn. So he'll be able to turn that way uh, because of various things in the way, like that Kubel wagon and the other... In fact, he can't really see past that Kubel wagon. I don't think he's really got a shot. Yep, he's just too good. Too much cover, so I think he's just going to chill out. In fact, we'll move his turret back to where he was. Just taking it easy. Cool, so US second turn. What are they up to? Obviously these guys can't move or shoot. They're staying still. Uh, these guys here will go to ground as well. Try and inflict some uh, damage on uh, either, either these infantry. Uh, this tank here. He's wary of the infantry in this building, but might as well move up and try and secure things. So he's going to go four and a half to there. This Sherman back here, he's going to move up as well. We'll do a pivot and four inches. And this one here, four and a half inches forwards. Hopefully he should be able to get some shots against uh, either the Panther or that SDK triple two there. So shooting phase, we'll do our howitzer first. He's going to Let's shell the guys in this building. So yeah, we'll go for that. Nominate those dudes. And we'll roll, it'll be within 40 inches, no problem. And we'll roll uh, right in the center there. So skater dice, that way three inches. Probably a miss. Yep, it misses them completely. Other uh, shooting, uh, this Sherman here is going to yeah, let's blow up that uh, SDK triple two. We'll go for the go for the Panther. Okay, we'll we'll nominate a couple here. We'll fire our machine guns at this SDK triple two and the main gun against that Panther. Machine gun will be able to fire easily with ten degrees outside of the machine gun machine gun mount, so no problem there. Okay, machine gun. Uh, light. He's light two facing all around, so the machine gun will damage on a five plus. Doesn't damage. And the main gun, the panther's going to have cover there, but he'll be, he'll be to the side, I'd say. Yep, he's to the side. And the Sherman has also moved. He's usually 4 plus to hit, 5 plus for, for cover, 6 plus for moving, and then back to 5 for the lightness. Light 1 armor, so he's not able to inflict a, any damage. This Sherman here, he's moved forwards. Uh, he's going to... He'll fire his machine guns at that infantry unit and his main gun at the Kubel wagon. Try and take him out. So, machine guns non range with 16, and the main gun is going to annihilate that Kubel wagon. So, he's in normal range, 24. Uh, it's usually 4 plus. He's moved, becomes 5. But uh, unarmored, which is the same as light 2 uh, in terms of getting ahead. So, 4 plus becomes 5 plus for moving, and then four, then three plus, minus two. So three plus to, uh, to inflict damage there. Gets him. Now because he's unarmored, he'll head plus two to damage. So there's no other modifiers there. Plus two damage. That becomes three, which is weapon destroyed. So his machine gun is knocked out. Usually give him a yellow marker for a machine gun or a weapon knocked out. Uh, these guys obviously can't move or shoot. They're chilling out, but I'll remove the yellow marker. So we'll remember they're not pinned next turn. I'll give them a go to ground, just so we know. They'll still be at minus one damage. These guys here stay still, so they will 
Uh, they'll fire their rifles at the guys in the building, and everything else at those guys there. Uh, 16 inches for their machine guns, so they're in range. So machine guns, the minus one for the uh, gone to ground. It becomes a three, so that's not quite enough to inflict damage. And the rifles against guys in the building, 12 inch range, yep, they're in. Uh, against guys in the building, you measure to the edge of the building. Uh, so we'll roll for that. Rifles, because of the uh, the building, it'll give them minus one for cover. So minus one damage. Still enough to inflict 50%. It's a four. So 50% casually is there. They take a morale check. Yeah, assault infantry, so they won't worry too much about that. Hans and Fritz are dead, but they'll keep fighting. And that is the US second turn. Okay, Wehrmacht. Third, uh, yep. Second turn. So the guys on the half track, they'll go for a bit of a mesh. We'll go, you can usually go seven inches, I think. And a mag, seven inches, yep. So we can go race around here. He can pivot for free during his movement. So seven, do another seven to there behind this low cover. So any light vehicles can pivot for free and weave their way around uh, terrain. It's no problem. On the movement, uh, these guys in the building will uh, go to ground, make them even trickier to dislodge. It means they can fire all the heavy weapons. They're not moving, they're just taking cover. Uh, other movement, let's see. I think this SDK will stay right where it is. Same with the Panther. Got a bad chance of hitting if he's uh, if he's staying still. Uh, this Kubel Wagon has become useless. He doesn't capture objectives or anything. He's got no weapon. So he can just go for a mad uh, dash back to base or something. No, 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 no. Goes for a mesh. He can go 14 inches, so he's pretty useless. Often we will remove light vehicles at this stage if they just have no weapon. So, German shooting. Uh, the SDK triple two will attempt to fire at the side of that, uh, side of that Sherman. He's got a 24 inch range gun. And so the close range is eight inches. And I believe he is within eight inches. Yes, he is. Check line of sight. He's got a pretty clear line of sight to the side of that Sherman. He stayed still. So usually he's five plus to hit. Uh, close range. So that's four plus. And then light for the side of the Sherman becomes three plus. So he needs a three to hit. Ooh! Ah uh, well, maybe next time. Uh, he also has a couple machine guns, but no infantry really in range. Now for the Panther. Uh, you can see that Sherman up over there. You can't see that Sherman, but he, can you see this Sherman? Um, just. You can both see them about, they're about over 80% covered, so they'll probably be cover too. So, hmm. I think he'll fire at that one. He rotates his turret. Uh, he is close range. Because within 16 inches is close range for his um, long barrel 75 mil. Uh, he hasn't moved, so usually he's three plus, uh, but he becomes two plus for close range. But because of the the cover two, there's a lot of hills and stuff between them. The two plus becomes three four for the two cover, so four plus. It's a mess. Oh dear. These German, uh, these Wehrmacht soldiers here will fire at, uh, they're going to declare all their stuff, so we'll declare uh, Panzerfaust against them, or the rocket launcher, or P Panzer Shrek, actually this uh, base has. They'll fire at the Sherman, as well as the AT rifle, and the HMGs will fire at that unit infantry. Probably the rifles are out of range, so no point declaring them. So, Panzer Shrek, he's within 12 inches, so that's fine. Don't forget the, uh, the arc of sight is 45 degrees either side of the base, so something like that, so easily within the arc. So we'll fire our uh, rocket launcher. Usually we're 3 plus because we're assault infantry. Uh, usually the rocket launcher is 4 plus, but they're 3 plus because they get a, a bonus to all uh, hit scores. So it comes 3 plus, so let's roll that and hit 3. They get it. Uh, it's just standard damage because the front armor is medium. There's no modifiers there, so we'll just roll normal, normal damage. Now it's hit the turret, so we'll roll a uh, weapon destroyed roll. Pretty much we need a four plus. But because the Sherman has a heavy gun mantlet, I believe it's only five, it's five plus instead. Yep, to the front of the Sherman. So four plus becomes five plus to destroy the weapon. Boom! Blows the turret off with a Panzer Shrek. Pretty good stuff. I'm not sure if the turrets come off on these, but I'll give them 
a red marker to indicate the weapon's been blown off. That blows off the entire turret, so the coaxial machine gun's gone as well. We've got the AT rifle against him, uh, usually 5+, plus, but it becomes 4+, plus because they're assault infantry. So 4+, plus, gets him. Minus 1 damage for a anti-tank rifle. That becomes tracks damaged. 3 becomes 2 for the minus 1. So it's track damaged with gun blown off. Not too bad. They'll fire their HMGs like they declared against these guys. 16 inches. We're still just out of range. Probably should have remembered that. That's alright. And these guys in the building, they will fire their grenades at that Sherman and everything else against that unit there. So grenades from 6 inches, measure from the edge of the building there, is in range. So usually uh, 4 plus for a grenade, but because they're assault infantry, it's only 3 plus. So not too bad. They should do some decent damage here. Yep. And grenades just do standard damage. Totally ignore armor. Uh, so if he was heavy to the front, it would still just be normal damage and normal to hit. They totally ignore, and even if it's light, it'll still only be standard. They just ignore those kind of things. So standard damage. Four. It has been immobilized. So actually we usually use uh, yellow for weapons and red for immobilized. So he's been pretty well knocked out. He's still got a heavy machine gun in there, so not too bad. And the rest of the weapons against those infantry. So 12 inches are they in range for rifles, just in range. Uh, now because they're veterans, they're plus one to damage against infantry. So we'll fire the rifles, plus one damage, but they've gone to ground, which, so it's minus one, it'll just even out, and one to three is nothing. So we'll fire our heavy machine gun. Once again, it's just standard damage. They get plus one, but minus one for cover, so no bonuses there, so nothing. And that is pretty much the German turn. So, US turn. US turn three, I think. What are they up to? Well, I think we might take a chance against that. Uh, we're going to try and deal with this half track coming around the corner. So our options are to stay where they are and do nothing, or maybe try to be a bit more aggressive. And I think I'll try and do that. I'll move them up uh, flat out behind there so they can deal with whatever happens next turn. Hopefully they don't get destroyed too badly. Uh, this guy here, he's got to continue his rolling advance, getting that way. Uh, this guy will move up as well, going usually four and a half, but he's going to pivot and go four inches, like that. And hopefully that'll bring him into close range at the side of that panther, and maybe help him destroy him a little bit. Okay, any other movement? He's mobilized, so he's not going anywhere. He says here, hmm, I might wait until uh, these infantry have been whittled down a bit before I advance, so... We'll just chill out there. Okay, the uh, US will fire their howitzer. And I think we're going to try to knock out these infantry in the center. Because they're going to be trouble to deal with in cover and gone to ground. So we'll aim at them again, right in the center. Just roll 1d6 scatter. It's a, it's a direct miss, as I like to call it. Uh, so it scatters into there and explodes in the building somewhere. Cool, so other US shooting. He'll fire his uh, HMGs into the into the building there, so it's minus two, minus one for cover, minus one for gone to ground. So essentially, he needs a six to inflict damage. Doesn't get it. Okay, these guys here have moved flat out, so they're not uh, going to be firing any weapons. These guys back here, they'll have to fire everything they've got against the guys in the uh, building because I know these guys are out of out of range. Uh, Twelve inches, so we're in range for uh, rifles. So rifles. Once again, minus two damage, cover, and gone to ground. Minus one each, so minus two in total. I need a six. Don't get it. Uh, HMG, same thing. Need a six. Oh, I get it. Wipes them out. So, because I've already taken 50% casualties, they're now wiped out. Quick and deadly. Often it's hard to inflict 50%, but once you do, they're gone. Cool. So, all the other things uh, they declared are uh, over. The Sherman here, who's advancing. He's going to, what can he see down there? Move this so I can get a good line of sight. It's always good to become the tank commander and try to experience what they see. So we can't actually see that panther, but he's going to fire everything he's got against the, uh, in fact... No, I've got a better idea. He's going to try and fire that um, half-track down there. So he declares to fire at the half-track, and machine gun is against them. So 
His uh, turret is a fast turret, it can pivot freely, no problems. So he turns that way. He's got a bit of um, elevation there as well, no problem. So he's firing at the half track over there. He's firing directly over these guys. Another good reason to have curves in your terrain is you can shoot over things without too much issue. Uh, he'll be at standard range. He has moved. And the half track will have cover. So usually he's full plus to hit. Move comes 5 plus, standard range, so no modifier there, uh, 6 plus for cover, and then because it's light 2, it goes from 6 down to 5, down to 4, so he needs a 4 plus to take out that half track. He gets it! So there's no modifiers for range or anything on the damage roll, but he does have cover and he has light 2. So light 2 adds a plus 2 to the roll, and cover makes it minus 1, so it'll be plus 1 in total, plus 1 damage. Two, so it tracks damaged on that half track. It got away lightly. Cool, and his machine gun will fire at those guys. And they're six inches away, which is no problem. They've gone to ground. Probably won't give them cover because there's not enough of a hill in between them. So minus one damage. Ooh, that was close. So they're okay. Now this Sherman here. He's going to Pivot his uh, turret that way to fire this panther. And it won't be enough to still target that SDK as well, because he's only got 10 degrees out of the side of his machine gun. So, if I was really crafty, I could probably slightly angle that way so each one is in within 10 degrees, but let's not worry about that. He's going to fire his main gun at the panther. Within 12 inches, he's close range. So he is close range. And just check the arc, he heads to the side. So he's moved. He's usually got a 4 plus hit score, so 4 becomes 5 for moving. Uh, it goes down to 3, uh, sorry, it goes from 5 to 4 for uh, close range, and then 4 to 3 for uh, the light facing of the panther. Panther's heavy 2 to the front and light to the side and rear. So let's go over that again. 4 plus, 5 for moving, uh, 4 for cl close range, and 3 for light. So 3 plus gets him. Now, a light facing gives you plus one damage, and because he's also close, it becomes plus two damage. So I'm saying, rest in peace, Panther. Yep, plus two damage becomes six. So the Panther uh, explodes, and it's nothing but a crater in the ground. Pretty good move from that uh, Sherman. And has the Germans looking uh, a bit skint on the ground, but that's okay. So the German turn. They're going to have to do everything right at this stage, uh, and they're often an os front. It can go either way. You don't really... Uh, each game could be different, depending on how you roll. So a few dice are rolled, that, uh, yep, anything's possible. So sometimes you just have to hold out and try and do your best. Okay, so German turn. What are they up to? This guy's going to stay still, try and take out that um, Sherman at point-blank range. Well, he doesn't have a point-blank, but close range at least. And over here, we're going to have some fun with the guys on this half track. So, we'll move 7 inches to there. You can pivot for free. And then we'll disembark. So that kind of is moving up to 3 inches out. Uh, because uh, he's only moved 7 inches, it's his normal move. They can disembark. Uh, if he'd move any further than that, they'd have to stay in. So yeah, let's uh, do our shooting phase. We'll start with this guy. He's close range of the Sherman, hasn't moved. He's just got a 5 plus hit score, uh, 4 plus for close range, and 3 plus for the light facing to the side of the Sherman. So he gets it, and then usually he's minus 1 type, so minus 1 damage. Uh, he's close range, which becomes a standard type, so negates the minus 1, and because he's light, it becomes plus 1. So let's see that auto cannon do its work. Plus 1 damage. Five, so the Sherman bursts into flames from autocannon fire from the side. Not too bad, really. Uh, so the Sherman is completely destroyed, but he stays there as a you know a line of sight blocking uh, hunk and burning tanks. Got to have burning tanks in a World War Two game. So often when we see uh, Russian T-34s being spammed, we see a lot of burning T-34s by the end of the game, which uh, really adds to the the fun. So these guys in the center, they're going to fire their rocket launcher at this tank, as well as their AT rifle. Uh, they know they're out of range of them, so I won't bother checking that. 
Uh, but if they're sneaky, they might be able to target those infantry down there as well. So they can try and target those infantry down the corner there. They might as well give it a shot. So they're declaring rocket launcher, AT rifle, everything else against those infantry. So rocket launcher, 12 inches, not quite in range, but the AT rifle at 16 will be in range. So usually it's a 5 plus, but they have assault infantry, so it comes 4 plus. So 4 plus to attack that uh, Sherman. I'll check on his sight, but it might seem pretty clearly. Yeah. So 4 plus. That's a mess. Uh, the heavy machine gun, 16 inches. Yep, he's in range. Uh, because of all the intersecting cover, they will get cover. But because they're assault infantry, they also get a plus 1, so it evens it out. Minus 1 cover, plus 1 for assault infantry, so just a standard modifier. Uh, and that is nothing. One to three, nothing. I'll check their range for rifles as well. Not in range, so that's fine. And now for the guys who just got out of the half track. So, uh, because we've got to start at the back, because he's a vehicle, he can shoot over infantry against the other infantry. So I'll fire his one machine gun on top. That'll just be standard damage, no modifier there. That one to three is nothing. And now for the uh, stormtroopers, the assault infantry. Uh, they're within 6 inch range, so they can fire their grenades, and as well as their rifles. So grenades, we get plus 1 damage, because of their, uh, their assault infantry, they get plus 1 against infantry targets. They're excellent at throwing grenades, and flamethrowers, whatever it is, so plus 1 damage. 3 becomes 4, which is 50% casualties. Uh, they'll take a pinning test, the, uh, the US soldiers. The US are pinned, a 1 or a 2. And they also fire their rifles, which will be plus 1 damage as well, for the assault infantry. Yep, and so they wipe out that unit of uh, US infantry. They're taking 50% casualties twice. There's no half-life of endless 50% casualties. You're just uh, full strength, 50% or wiped out. So it's very quick and brutal if you can get infantry in the right place. And that is the Wehrmacht turn. So, next US turn. They thought they were looking pretty good for a turn there, but now it's looking a bit more even. So what are we going to do? Let's move this tank up. Sherman, he'll go four and a half inches to there. Uh, these guys in the center, what are they going to do? I think we're going to move to deal with those. Uh, yeah, let's let's go for it. We'll try and move and deal with these uh, assault infantry, so we can pivot for free as as uh, as infantry. He's still kind of moving. Then we'll go three inches. And we'll try and get into a grenade range with those uh, assault infantry. No other movement, so we'll do our shooting phase. Start with our howitzer. Uh, we will we'll try to take out these infantry here, I think. Could be a good safe distance. Check your range, 40 inches. Yep, no problem. I'll target right in the center, so I'll roll 1d6. Looks like a miss, 3 inches that way. Oh no, it still gets them. So plus 1 damage, but they've gone to ground, so it'll be standard damage. 4, 50% casualties, so they're gone. Wipes out that marked unit. Okay, other US shooting. He's destroyed. This guy here. He's got the uh, coaxial machine gun and the main gun. So he'll declare to shoot the machine gun there and the main gun at him. So pivot like that. Machine gun is in range. And I can see pretty clearly over that Sherman, so they won't get any cover there. So I'll fire the machine gun. 50% casualties. Not too bad. So the assault infantry have a pinning check. Ooh, they're pinned. Uh, you might think that dice is cocked, but because uh, terrain's up and down, we'll, I'll take that. We often have situations like that on these really poorly terrain. Um, if you're ever worried about something being cocked, you can try and balance a dice on it, but uh, in this situation, I'm just gonna take it as you know the one opposite the ground. And the main gun is gonna fire that half track, which I already declared, uh, within 24 inches. So he's in normal range. He has moved though, and there's no cover. So usually he's four plus, five for moved. That uh, becomes minus two for light two facing. So five, four, three, and he's a three plus to hit. He gets it. So he's hit the half track. He's in standard range. So there's no modifiers for range or cover, but he is plus two damage for the light two facing. Plus two damage. The half track is destroyed. Because he's not a tank or anything, he's just a light vehicle, and there's no explosion. Otherwise, the uh, infantry there would take damage, they're within one inch. But he's a light vehicle, so he's just removed. 
Okay, and now for these uh, infantry here, who have done their best to try and take a uh, into grenade range, to assault range, and yep, they are in range, so they will try to fire their grenades and rifles at them. It's the only things you can you can use when you're moving. So grenades, yep, it inflicts fifty percent casualties, so it takes them out, and that's pretty much them. So the Wehrmacht aren't looking very good at all at this stage. It has swung away from them. Uh, as soon as that panther died, it was, wasn't looking too good. Probably he could have been in a better position, and uh, really, as a German player, you're often uh, low on material, and you need to make uh, every, every turn count. Uh, so probably if, uh, if I was a proper German commander, I'd have him in a good, good position to have a good view of the entire table. 